Welcome back everyone to Brighton and as you can tell I am stood in an emergency medical tent. Yeah, the staff behind me are stunned still because well we've picked up quite a few injuries. But the real question is who is injured, how long and from when? And well unfortunately it's quite a few key players. First of all Robert Sanchez our starting goalkeeper. Yes as you can see agreed playing time first choice goalkeeper. He picked up a sports hernia. He's got a bit of an issue around his groin. That happened right before our very next game. I think it was probably about a week prior to it. You can look at the dates and work out exactly when it was prior to it. But it was prior to that next game. We needed to go find cover. Thankfully, I did go out and do that. And we'll have a little look at who I brought in as well as the other players I managed to bring in as cover as well. Now, on top of that, we then picked up an injury in that game, and that game was, in fact, against West Ham. Adam Lallana, an important player, picked up a sprained ankle ligament in that one. So, two big injuries for quite lengthy times, because that first one was nine days to two weeks. We then have Veltman. Now, he's not a starter, he's a backup for me. His agreed playing time is as regular starter, but he tore his wrist when we had him as cover against Southampton. That put us down to 10 men, by the way, just saying. And Danny Welbeck then went and damaged his knee cartilage just to add to the injury list for four to six weeks. But who did I bring in as cover? Okay, so we're here in the notification screen because I think it's a nice little intermediary point between our transfers and our injuries because as you can see, we did have another injury in that Southampton game. In fact, Dan Byrne picked up an injury for three to four days. I can't quite remember if it was his injury or the other injury, but between the two, basically, we ended up going down to 10 men. Rather frustrating Southampton injuring a couple of our players to try and pick up a victory in that one. We then have our goalkeeper now. Carius has come in as cover for Sanchez. Hence, it's a nice transition to the transfers. So, those who don't know Carius, I don't know how you don't know him. He has one under 21 cap for Germany. No full caps for them. And, well, he is on loan from Liverpool. Two and a half star, two and a half star potential, as you can see, rather eccentric, good at one-on-ones, reflexes and rushing out are pretty solid as well, but we aren't going to be using them as a sweeper, so it doesn't matter too much. These are the stats for what we'll actually be using him for. In terms of his history, well, he's mainly been playing at Besiktas, did play four games last season for Union Berlin, but Liverpool's just been loaning him out here, there and everywhere, and I say here, there and everywhere. They've loaned him out twice. Still, they bought him for five million from Maine. And yeah, he was prior to that at Man City, who bought him for two hundred grand. That was a nice bit of business. Two hundred grand. Well, nice bit of business from Maine. They stole him on a free, and then sold him on for five million to Liverpool. So Maine, not bad. Not bad, my friends. Not bad. But. Who is joining Carrius? Well, we can see up here a Romanian player is going to be joining. Now, we're not going to have a look at that one yet, but we are going to look at someone else. And that someone else is our second new addition. Yes, Michael Bradley. He was the second edition. Brought him in for 275,000. Yes, he's old. 34 years old, 152 international caps for the United States, 17 goals, 8 under 20 caps and 1 goal though. Nice and experienced and as you can see he's 3.5 star, 3.5 star potential. I couldn't pass that up for just under 300 grand even if he is 34 years of age. Heck, look at his value, 900 to 1.9. He might be old, but we could still probably sell him on for profit next season. Well, I say we, the club, because of course we will be going to another club next year, but hopefully they can utilize Michael Bradley going forward. Those who don't know Michael Bradley, of course, is an MLS player, or at least is an MLS player now. He started off in the MLS, he then went across Holland, went to Germany for a bit, had a season on loan, in fact, Aston Villa where he played three old games, went back to Germany, went over to Italy, moved about a little bit in Italy, then went back to the United States for six million to 
up to Toronto where he remained and then came here for a nice little 275 grand and that is the breakdown there is no additional costs simply 275 grand as well as Michael Bradley, we had four other additions on Deadline Day. Yes, he came on Deadline Day. And, well, this is another one to make cover. He is covering for Lalana, of course, who picked up that injury. He's probably going to sit on our bench. In fact, I think I'm going to use Welbeck as our backup Ramalda in terms of the winger. So, he's going to be a backup to them he's just basically going to provide us a little bit more cover coming off the bench Farias two and a half star two and a half star potential I compared him to Welbeck I was going to just loan out Welbeck didn't think he would like that maybe sell him again I didn't think he would like that so I ended up keeping him using him because he's slightly better than Farias as a Ramada but as you can see he's pretty solid himself Mainly the composure concentration is where he lacks tens, but the rest is all yellow. Nice and solid player. Coming in from Cagliari, only on six and a half grand per week is nice and cheap. And well, he's a pretty darn decent player. Played 29 games last season in Serie A. Got four goals prior to that, 18 and two. And yeah, look, he's a nice solid player who has played throughout in Italy. The final loan edition is Bunasar. Now, I noticed, like with pretty much everyone else, we was getting some injuries. It was hurting us at our wing backs. We really needed someone who could just cover both sides, use up only one slot in our registration. And, well, Bunasar was ideal for that. He's 29 years of age. He's got one cap for Senegal. And, yeah. He managed to come in without any issues due to work permit because he's on a loan and he's a nice solid addition for this. Now, if we look at wing back, as you can see, the only thing he's really struggling at is marking on 10. Dribbling's at 14 though. I wanted to make sure we had a decent crosser because of course he's going to be getting up and whipping in some crosses. His acceleration's good. He's got plenty of pace. Now, he was playing for Bayern's second team last season. And probably, sorry, this season. He was in their second team last season. He was bought for 7 million from Marseille. In fact, got eight games for Bayern. So he's not a bad little player. He didn't play too much for Marseille that year. But prior to that, he got a few games 27, 29, 29, 26. So he was a decent player for Marseille. Was decent in the French league. He'll be adequate back up here in the Premier League. Next up is our record-breaking Romanian, yes, Stan Siu. I'm probably butchering that, but the 28-year-old international, 49 caps, 10 goals, 13 under 21 caps with three goals as well. His free star, pre-star potential, 7.4 to 9.2 valuation. But how much do you think I paid for this player? I'll give you just a little bit to think about that. Well, I in fact only paid 6.75. Yes, as you can see a couple of times prior to that, he has actually gone for more he was initially bought for 190 grand when he was originally in Romania his next transfer was for 675 grand then Anderlecht decided to take him to Belgium for 7.25 Sparta Prague then for 4.1 to the Czech Republic 8.75 to go to Saudi Arabia for a season he only played 10 games and got two goals but then he went back to the Czech Republic for 3.4 the okay he decided to go to both Prague teams and then he came here for 6.75 after playing five games of course for Slavia Prague getting no goals, two assists and a seven average rating. But we have one more new edition, a legendary edition. But who is it? Well, that legendary edition is, of course, Cesc Fabregas. Now, he has been a bit of a pain in the backside. Initially, I wanted to bring him in as really some backup in central attacking mid. The problem is, when it came to his contract, he just wouldn't let me take out the fact that he wanted to be a central midfielder, deep-lying playmaker. I don't mind it. I would have preferred him as cover. 
as a cam. I might still use him as a cover as a cam to his annoyance. Because as you can see, his positioning is only 7, but his first touch is still 17. Great anticipation, great composure, great vision, great technical. His balance is still there. His physicals aren't too bad. They're not great. His agility is still there. He's got some balance and some natural fitness. And yeah, he's a still a decent player. He can cross the ball, of course. He can do free kicks, long shots, everything that we need him to do to cover for one of our departures. And that departure is Pascal Gross. Now, he's a decent player. He's a good player. Three star, three star potential. But we are supposed to be a selling club. And well, he's 30 years of age. This was the perfect time to capitalize on his value. We got a solid 8 million. As you can see, he's valued at 7.4 to 11. And they're giving him a decent contract as a squad player. We might have been able to get him to be a squad player. But he did mean I could bring in all the other players. We wouldn't have had, we would have probably had about two transfers if I didn't get rid of him, to be honest. So yeah, that 8 million did go a long way. And as much as I'm probably going to miss him, he was a solid playmaker. He took set pieces. He did everything. He was a decent player. I can't say anything bad about Gross. But the money just goes further. So he has gone to Roma. I wish Pascal Gross the best going forward. But it is of course time to have a little look at those games from between episodes. Okay, so those of you who watch the York save, you're probably expecting a bunch of highlights. This series, I'm going to try and trim it down, make it a little bit quicker so episodes don't drag on as much because we do need to do the draws. And yeah, if I start doing catch up highlights of all the games and then having to do the draw, we're going to end up with like 35 minute episodes at the end of season. So what we're going to do is quickly just talk over the games. First of all is West Ham. Now, as you can see, it finished 4 to that was a cracker of a game. Higuain got us off to a nice early start. As you can see, though, they pulled one back. And we are going to have a little look at that goal they pulled back. Sorry, no, Lallana then scored. They then pulled one back. It was an interesting one. We'll have a look at it. We then did manage to pull further ahead though. Higuain gone and got us a third. They then got a second one. It was 3-2. But then Cusarella goes and gets us a fourth. But let's have a little look at their first goal. It was silly. Very silly. Webster, I'm not happy with him for this one. Okay, so as you can see, they're trying to build a play down the left-hand side. It's played inside to Rice. Lovely ball up. Webster... Yeah, just decided to assist their player. He just passed it across the line. And nice simple finish into an open net for West Ham. Then, on top of the West Ham game, we then played Southampton. This, of course, in the Carabao Cup second round. And we had a simple, well, not so simple, one one game, which we won on penalties. So, as you can see, first of all, I'll that scored a great goal it was a very good goal they then went and equalized on the 90th minute after they'd injured two of our players in Bern and Veltman I believe Bern I took off and then Veltman got injured I'm pretty sure that's the way I'm pretty sure Ben took a knock near half time I took him off with a couple of players as we progressed to our usual substitution time then Veltman got injured and they capitalized on 10 men to get an equalizer thankfully though as you can see all five of our goal scorers scored and well Prowse it was a terrible terrible penalty very bad now this is the big one Manchester City as you can see we was lucky really lucky this one I went cautious we played really well. Look at these players. Cusarella on the 6.3 and a couple of these on 6.4s. But you know what? It was a hard-fought game from the lads. I couldn't have asked for any more from them. They piled on pressure on us. But we just held up. We held up and it was great. Higuain getting the open net. Rodri, though, got them an equaliser eventually. And as disappointing as it was you can't really complain with a 1-1 draw to Manchester City especially as Brighton so 
it brings us to today's game well our game in a few days time as you can see it's the 5th of september at the moment and we play on the 12th just a week away so i'm going to advance to today's game where we shall be taking on tottenham hotspur finally game time is upon us and well our next episode opponent is actually playing in the other game. No, not Aston Villa. Of course not. I'm talking about an away game to Crystal Palace. Yes, we are going to be doing the exact same journey Aston Villa are doing right now in the next episode. But right now, we have quite the battle as we take on Tottenham. Now, looking at the table, Tottenham's having quite a rough start to the season, which means... They're probably going to bang five goals past us so let's continue let's head on into this game if it will hurry up okay palace nil nil okay well opposition instructions we are going to apply them it's suggesting we go from cautious to a balanced now it's tottenham still i'm not going to go to a balanced i'm going to keep the cautious mentality any of the big teams, I'm going to keep that cautious mentality. So, Man U, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, I'm putting in that bracket. Maybe wrongfully so. Also probably going to do the same with maybe Leicester. But, let's submit the team. Enough rambling from me before I do that, actually. We've got Carrius in goal, backline, Okusarella, Weber, Duke and Lamperty on the left hand side is Farias on the right is Trossard stands Yao in between Bradley and Bissuma 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 in central midfield and Higuain up front you don't need me to read the bench the bench is way too long in the Premier League so let's just crack on with this we know the starters got a few squad numbers to give okay well a couple of people want number four and a couple want number ten neither I think are available no Neither are available. You can have 26. You can have 29. We'll give you, Mr. Bradley, 22. Why not? You can have number 21. And you can be number 6. We're going to have a number 6 on the wing. Which is probably going to bug me just as much as it's going to bug you. But... Let's crack on with this one. Let's pick up a victory. Come on. Let's head to Tottenham and pick up a victory. Now, we've got nothing to lose here. Exactly. Punch face. We've got nothing to lose. Let's just go for it. Let's go pick up that win. They are going for five at the back against us. Are they scared? They're running scared. Five at the back at home. Tottenham. Come on. You've had in Brighton. Brighton. The mighty Brighton, admittedly. With some of our legendary players joining the team like Bradley and Fabregas and Higuain but five at the back come on come on we've got a lone striker you shouldn't need five at the back against us that's really really running scared also I apologize if the siren outside is rather loud Greece is gonna hoof it upfield though song pod nods it down where's he going to go with this one well he's going to pull it back it's over to david he's going to nod it inside to harry kane harry kane's coming down this left hand side he's been pushed out wide davis though is going to get out to him lasella so gets it back to him and lamperty has got possession thankfully dispossessed them and got it away now of course we do have less possession than tottenham in this one what is a little bit disappointing though we we yet to have a shot thus far Come on, let's get a shot at least right now. Farias plays it back to Cusarella. Cusarella tries one down to Far. Come on. That was a terrible pass. Ramos was going to get that ball every day of the week. Now Dyer trying to build from the back. Plays it to La Celsa. La Celsa back to Dyer. Now up to La Celsa. Through ball to Kane. Kane goes back to La Celsa. He's just going to run at us this time. Now he's playing it back to Dyer. Dyer. He's made his way up to the halfway line. Where are they going to go with this one? Romero plays it up to Winks. Winks with a ball through to Son. Oh no, we can't give Son this much space. Please make the save. Thank you, Carrius. Can't believe I'm saying that sentence. Thank you, Carrius. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we are in this one. It's going to be a rather interesting journey, I think, as we travel around the leagues and I pick up different players. Right now, Carrius. One of my favourite players in this save thus far. Now, it's admittedly early on. It's second 
episode but i'm enjoying him i'm enjoying him he's done a good job as cover i'm probably gonna miss him in fact i might just keep him in the starting lineup our goalkeeper might get a little bit mad at me doing that but he has shown that he deserves to be playing in the premier league and i might just leave him there so royal collecting that ball now another highlight lamptey is coming down this right hand side he has been absolutely snapped send Le Celser off get him off this pitch good job ref dirty football from Le Celso. he's starting to look more like leeds than tottenham come on I know you're wearing white, but still, try and break people's legs. Not cool, bro. Not cool. So, three shots. Unfortunately, still not to have one on target this half, but hopefully we can change that in the second half. I am happy. I'm not happy with some of these performances, though. Our shooting needs to be better. I know we're playing Tottenham, but we still need to shoot better. It's nice that we've got the draw so far, but we're not going to keep that if we can't get some shots on target. Arias though plays it out to Cusarella. Cusarella coming down this left hand side. What can he do with it? Pulls it inside to Bradley. Bradley finds Higuain. Ball across to Stantiao. Stantiao now back to Bradley. Bradley over to Cusarella. He's got plenty of space on this left hand side. Now he's going to go back to Bradley. Inside to Stantiao. Stantiao, where's he going to go with this one? Back to Bradley once more. Cusarella. Nice triangles, but we need to start moving forward, especially against 10 men. In fact, in fact, Get off cautious mentality. We're going positive. We've got 10 men against us. We've got to try and push forward now. At least try and push forward. Right now though, Farias is having a rough time over on that wing. Probably going to bring on Welbeck. Cross out though. He's going to pull it back to Bismal. He's going to play into Stantiao. Over to Lamperty. Lamperty to Stantiao. He's been pushed over. Who's going to take this one though? Who is taking this one? That is the question. First of all, we've got to figure out whether we're even going to get it. Don't know why we need VAR to check this one. He looked like he was bulldozing over to me. I think we should be getting a penalty. Official. Anytime today, VAR. And the magic box. Says we get a penalty. Right, come on, let's put this one away. Stantiao's getting a little bit tired now. Our penalty taker for this one shall be... Trossard. Trossard, where's he going to go with this one? Bottom left. Come on, Trossard. Nice penalty. And we... I can't believe it. Have the lead here away to Tottenham. Now, we've got a certain player who needs to go off. Can't be having that again. Another injury. How many injuries are we going to get at this club? I've never known a club get so many injuries. I swear, every time I've tried playing as Brighton, not just in this version of the game, but just FM in general, I swear Brighton is just like cursed to get injured. I don't know what it is with this club, but I swear they are just cursed in Football Manager. It's like the opposite of Watford. Watford has the magical miles effect. Yeah. Don't know who in Sports Interactive doesn't like Brighton, but someone I swear doesn't, because there seems to code in them getting injured a lot. Now, conspiracy theory, I know, but still. 6.1 for Trossard. I think that should probably go up after the penalty, though. 6.2 for Farias. Yeah, he needs to pick things up. And Stantiao is absolutely shattered. So, McAllister is going to come on there. And what are we going to do with our wing? In fact, I didn't. I just noticed I didn't put Welbeck on the bench. Hmm. Hmm. That was a mistake on my part. I'm pretty sure Farias is supposed to be on our bench and... I don't know. I don't know what I did in that regard. I apologise, Welbeck. I somehow managed to misplace you. I don't know how you misplace a player, but I did. And I apologise for it. So um marsh can come on now marshall mathers where would you rather be that side as a winger okay so how about you know what i'll let him be a winger we don't need double we'll go back to single with cross arts give him a go on his own he's having a rough time actually what we'll do in fact we'll go double we'll swap him over there we'll try him on the other wing see if he plays a bit better on the left 
and yeah i think that's the plan that's all of our subs sorted out hopefully we don't pick up any more injuries proceed yes tactically we would like to proceed with those changes got fabregas and mcallister coming on cross out still on a 6-1 by the way after that penalty which doesn't quite make sense to me but that's what the game wants to do. Davies whips one across. I can't remember who it was in one of our catch-up games. There was on like 6.2 and after a goal or an assist, they jumped up to like 6.8. So the fact he's still on a 6-1. Yes, it was a penalty. Also, Harry Kane has just gone and got them an equaliser, which is irritating. Really irritating. Really, really irritating. But you know what? We'll take a draw. We'll take a draw at some even though they're down to 10 men, draw would still be pretty decent. So, oof! Losing to 10 men Tottenham, though, would not. Ramos crashes it against the crossbar. And they have a corner. Where will we go with this one? Son, of course, will be the one to take it. Whips it in. Skip cannot get onto the end of it as Dunk nods it away. Higuain now on the counter attack, though. Not the quickest of people, though, and he doesn't get past them in the end. Royal here on the right hand side. What's he going to do? What is Royal's royal decree? Well, he's going to play it back to Ramos. That is his plan. And he goes all the way back to Lloris. Now, what's Lloris going to do with this one? He's going to hoof it upfield, in fact, straight to Dunk. He brings it down for Fabregas. Up to McAllister. He's got Trossard. Trossard, lovely ball over the top to Marsh. What can Marsh do with this? Kick it into the back row of the stand. Marsh, this is why you don't start, my friend. Lamptey, what can he do? Throws it in to Marsh, back to Lamptey. He finds Fabregas, now McAllister. McAllister pulls it all the way back to Webster. Where is the dictionary going to go with this one? Well, he goes to McAllister. Fabregas now finds Cusarella on this left-hand side. Pulls it inside to Trossard. Trossard from range is forced. A beautiful save from Lloris. Not so much having to dive so far, but the fact that he just held on to it, didn't spill it, didn't push it away just held on to the ball and that was that fabregas with a free kick whips it in marsh near post pulls it back for fabregas is he still on side he is whips it back in lamperty can't do anything with it can he do anything with the second effort though he turns pulls it back for dunk dunk with the ball through to trossard trossard dunk maybe try it along the ground and trossard maybe just bring it down yeah that seemed overly complicated Lamperty though, not going to see that on the left, so no need to comment further on that one now. Can we do anything with this corner? Fabregas, of course, will be the one to deliver it. Whips it in and it's nodded away, but we should be able to get this one. Cusarella will be the one to collect this ball. What's he going to do with it? Pulls it inside to the dictionary. Dictionary now over to Dunk. Dunk is going to play it up to Marsh. Marsh now to McAllister. That, that was a gutsy shot. Fabregas, come on. Dangerous position. Free kick. Hits the wall. Comes out to Marsh though. Ooh. It's blocked again. Fortunately, it's blocked by our own player. And it's gone out. So, five minutes plus additional time. I'm going to say three minutes of additional time in this one. All right, now though, Sessegnon with the free kick goes short to Son. He's going to go all the way back to Romero in the center circle. Back to Son. Over there, two Dyer on this left hand side gets it through to Kane. Kane from range. That was scary. Scary shot from Kane, thankfully. Whistles over the bar. In fact, it's four additional minutes. Can we get another goal? Looks more like Tottenham here. They've got the highlight. Dyer short to Sessignon. Pulls it back to Dyer. Now Ndombele. Ndombele, where's he going to go with this one? He goes back to Skip. Skip tries the ball over top to Kane. I think we should win this race, though. Lamptey gets it. He plays it over to Fabregas. Now, just under a minute remains in this one. Lamptey inside to Fabregas. Fabregas, you need to get further upfield. You're a midfielder, not a defender. McAllister back to Lamptey. Lamptey coming down this right-hand side. Ball through now to Marsh. Has he found enough space? though he's going to pull it back to Lamptey Lamptey over to Dunk on the halfway line he trips chips it up to McAllister he finds Fabregas now Lamptey's got a bit of space on this right hand 
He had space Lamptey. Frustratingly big touch. And that is how it's going to end. On that dismal Lamptey touch. Higuain struggling in this one with a 6 3 dunk. Solid 7 performance out the back. Webster 6-4 did need a little bit more from him. Thankfully, that didn't come to bite us on the backside. McAllister had a rough one. Farias 6-2 was definitely having a bad game. Stantiu also 6-5. Need a little bit more from you as well. Bisuma 7. Good job from him. Unfortunately, was a bit too tired to remain in this one. But hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully we can pick up a victory in the next episode. As we, of course, take on Crystal Palace. But I thank you all for joining us. I hope you all have a lovely night. And goodbye.